The operator of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant says it has found another radioactive water leak. TEPCO officials say that no radioactive water reached the ocean as there are no drainage systems loading, leading rather, into the sea near the site. The company estimates the total amount of the leakage at 1.6 tons of water. The leaked water drained into the ground from the barrier surrounding tanks storing contaminated water. TEPCO officials said they found water coming from the barrier's foundation joints. Workers at the plant measured 93 becquerels per liter of strontium-90 in the water remaining within the fence. The radiation level is about nine times the national limit for water allowed to be released from the barrier. The workers said they believed the cause of the leakage was deteriorated joints. They added that they think the rainwater absorbed radioactive materials that have been in the environment since the March 2011 accident. Later on Sunday, they also found two more spots leaking water and are trying to locate the cause. It will beef up its headquarters in Fukushima in a bid to help residents return to their homes. They're planning to move the Fukushima headquarters to a municipality in a zone currently designated as an evacuation area. TEPCO will finish compiling its 10-year business plan on Friday. The Fukushima Revitalization Headquarters is now located at the National Soccer Team's training compound just outside the zone. TEPCO also plans to add hundreds of workers to its labor force to total 2,000. The increased personnel will handle operations such as cleaning up homes and offices for all returning residents and measurement of residents' radiation levels. The utility said it is hoping the new office will help boost the regional economy and help residents return the home. Officials say the cleanup operation around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is behind schedule. They say they are now aiming to complete the work by March 2017. Environment Ministry officials said in January of last year that decontamination would be finished by March 2014, except in areas with very high radiation levels. However, the plan has fallen behind in six out of 11 municipalities. The ministry officials have struggled to gain approval from the residents for temporary storage sites for contaminated soil. They say they will prioritize work in residential areas so people can return home as soon as possible. There's still no decontamination plan for Futaba. The town is where the nuclear plant is located. The officials are still trying to negotiate a schedule Starting with this locals. This week about the ongoing effort to deal with the radioactive fallout from the nuclear accident in Fukushima, Japan. Our latest story focuses on forests. They cover 70% of the prefecture. The government has yet to decide how to decontaminate them. NHK World's Ryo Asami shows us how tainted the woods are and examines the impact of not cleaning them up. Kawauchi is 20 kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Houses in the village are surrounded by forests. In November, researchers from the Japan Atomic Energy Agency conducted surveys to find out how far the contamination has spread. Now they constantly measure radiation in the woods. They start near the ground. It's 1.87 microsieverts per hour here. That's more than 30 times what's normal. They took readings in 10 locations. The radiation in each place was much higher than what they measured in the contaminated neighborhoods. Radiation levels tend to be high in forests because the trees are contaminated. The researchers think Leaves are emitting high levels of radiation. They wanted to identify any other sources, so they tested the forest soil. They gathered fallen leaves, and they collected soil at depths of 1, 5, and 10 centimeters. They brought mobile labs to test the samples immediately. The results show the soil contains more than 15,000 becquerels of radioactive substances per kilogram. It's nearly twice the level that ought to be treated as radioactive waste. 
The researchers are concerned the substances are spreading beyond the forest. They say rain could spread radiation over the ground and into rivers. They think it could flow to other areas where people live. Radioactive substances move with the soil, which can end up in rivers, and we're already seeing that happen. We're concerned about the people who live downstream. We visited a residential area, five kilometers from the survey site. Decontamination here was completed this spring. People have started returning to their homes. But some residents say the cleanup did not reduce the radiation level effectively. They say in some places it has even increased since the decontamination. Radioactive particles in the forest trickle down when it rains. I think we need to have another round of decontamination work here. The government is reluctant to launch decontamination efforts in forests. Officials say they would need to extract and store vast amounts of hazardous waste. And they say cutting down trees and removing topsoil would destroy the environment. Village leaders say homes are not safe until the forests are cleaned up. Forest decontamination is absolutely necessary. We'll keep on insisting to the government that radiation levels won't go down unless they do the cleanup. Only half the people of this village have been able to return home. With concern that radiation levels will remain high, the rest don't know when they will be able to join them. Ryo Asami, NHK World, Kawauchi, Fukushima. Still restarting Japan's nuclear power plants returned to the streets of central Tokyo on Sunday. The march was organized by civic groups that want to see an end to nuclear power generation. The Abe administration intends to scrap the nuclear free energy policy of the former Democratic Party led government. It plans to restart the nation's nuclear power plants if safety can be ensured. The new energy policy is set to be approved by the cabinet next month. The march ended with participants surrounding the Diet building chanting slo such slogans as don't restart reactors and don't create nuclear waste. I am opposed to restarting nuclear power plants before the troubles at the Fukushima are resolved. The government should decide to immediately abolish all nuclear power plants and work to promote renewable energy sources. The organizer of the march says 15,000 people turned out for the protest at the Diet Building, while police put the figure at about 2,000. The most advanced robots are competing in a contest in the U.S. state of Florida. The robots are built to work in extreme, uninhabitable conditions. Fifteen teams are competing in a two-day DARPA Robotics Challenge. The event has been organized by a research institute with the U.S. Defense Department. The aim is to create mechanized rescue teams that could be used in emergencies such as the Fukushima nuclear accident. The teams are operating robots in eight events. They include driving vehicles, removing obstacles and handling firefighting hoses. The Japanese venture firm Shaft took the lead after the first round of the competition on Friday. The firm has been acquired by the American IT giant Google. The Shaft entry is a 1.48 meter tall bipedal robot weighing 95 kilograms. It has two arms that can smoothly open closed doors. In Fukushima specifically, in the first 24 hours, if someone could have went in, the whole escalation of the nuclear catastrophe had, could have been prevented, but no, humans could not enter because of the high radioactivity. Other competitors in the contest include robots from NASA and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology.
Well, nothing beats local knowledge when visiting a new town. Visitors to Iwaki City in Fukushima Prefecture get just that when they join a bus tour. The guides are young, but the stories of recovery and hope leave a lasting impression. It's a guided tour with a difference, organized and led by local high school students. This is their hometown, and they want people to know exactly what happened here and how it's rebuilding. The tsunami came halfway up those windows. It was a huge wave of water. The sea is just over there. The aim of the tour is to show the situation in Iwaki and meet and speak with the residents. The students have organized it all themselves, picking the destinations and the people who the visitors get to meet. This is the fifth tour they've led. Haruna Shiraiwa came up with the idea of the tours last year. She is keen to bring more people back to Iwaki, as the number of visitors has fallen sharply since the disaster and the ensuing nuclear crisis. She and the other students thought long and hard about how to make the tours most meaningful. Instead of just taking visitors for a look, they decided to make it more personal a chance to forge real bonds with the people of Iwaki. I don't just want to show the devastation caused by the tsunami. I want our guests to really enjoy visiting Iwaki by meeting the wonderful people who live here. But it's important that we don't forget the disaster which destroyed our hometown. These tours are a way to keep those memories alive. One of the local specialties is kamaboko fish cakes. After the disaster, this firm distributed its supply of cakes to survivors. Makiko Shike runs workshops here at the plant. Many companies had to go out of business after the disaster. But we've managed to hang in there and stay in business. The visitors try their hand at making the fish cakes. Then they have a taste. Mm. <laughs> now, the visit to the area worst hit by the tsunami. There hasn't been any rebuilding. About 800 people lived here in about 300 households. This is all that's left. So far, 150 people across Japan have taken the tour. It's a show of support for the students' idea of bonding visitors and survivors. The students' feelings made a deep impact on me. I really admire the strength of the people of Iwaki and the Tohoku region as they strive to get back on their feet. I hope our guests remember Iwaki and keep coming back. Even if they can't, it would be a great help if they would just tell their friends what a good place Iwaki is. I hope they do that. Haruna and the other students hope the visitors keep coming. They want people to understand the strength and resilience of Iwaki's residents. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video. And, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.